I would like to address the audience as dear aerospace and defense stakeholders because there are different uh, uh, interest groups in the audience and they're always and any topic which touch upon has a pros and cons for each one of us. Fortunately, the topic which I would speak and maybe GTRE director and even AVM Tejpal Singh will speak probably is of interest to all of us together combined. Uh, and when I say all of us, I include me as a foreign OEM representative here. Uh, so to start with, uh, uh, you know, I would cover it under four headings that why do we need an aero engine to be designed, developed and manufactured in India? And what's and short touch upon what's happening on the positive aspects of the policy side and the execution side to probably make it happen in the coming years. And then maybe touch a bit on what is Safran's proposal to uh, develop such a aero engine in collaboration with DRDO and the Indian industry. So to start with LCA Mark I, Mark II, TEDBF, AMCA, all of these platforms are going to be the cornerstones for Indian Air Force and Indian Navy in the coming decades, uh, if I may say so. It helping us India achieve global leadership, uh, which is one of the vision for the country right now. But there is a problem right at the beginning. Uh, there is no indigenous jet engine to power this ambition uh, of uh, aircrafts, a fleet of aircrafts which are getting designed and and some people of course would say that why do we need so, I mean we have an aircraft designed and manufactured by us so aero engine can still remain important. Uh, I would split the re reason into three aspects, one is the technology part, the other is the geopolitical reason behind it and third of course is the commercial and the most important reason uh, for industry per se. Technologically we all know that there are more countries making nuclear weapons and space-based uh, uh, launches than doing aero engine. So there has to be a reason behind why only five uh, nations with the United Nations Security Council are the manufacturers or the designers of engine. And I am just including China in that because of their recent development of uh, the uh, w WS-10 and WS-15 engines otherwise they are still to catch up uh, technologically on the engine uh, side with the other three that is the US, France, UK and Russia. Having said that, uh, you know India has been doing quite well in uh, te technologies which are going into space, aircrafts, uh, I would say fighter jets, aircraft carriers, ca carriers and uh, combat jet engine has somehow been elusive. So. And some people touched upon the Maruth uh, experience and the Rolls-Royce engine that time and how the program didn't go forward and many other reasons. So, but the same story or the same uh, issue is dodging us now uh, for LCA and AMCA. So maybe we need that technology. So one of the strong reason is India needs to have the technology and hence there is a need to develop uh, in-house indigenous engine production, I mean design development program. Geopolitically, today's world is moving from what we used to call as VUCA environment to now what we call it as the Bani environment. And I will not, th those who knows, knows what I'm saying. So every country now needs to be self-reliant to the extent possible. It is not possible to be 100% self-reliant in every field, but to the extent possible. And as a defense and aerospace professional, we all know that any platform which is moving on land, sea or air needs to be powered and that power has to come from an engine. So it, I'm not talking about jet engine alone, you take marine engine or tank engines. So all of these things uh, put together need us to even think deeply that how much reliance, self-reliance in the engine technologies country should be. Last but not the least is the commercial aspect of it. Uh, there is a MOD estimate which says that we would have an electric, uh, we will have an aero engine market size of roughly 45 billion US dollars in the next two decades. It's a big number. That uh, boils down to about two and a half billion dollars per year roughly. Another uh, media report, a uh, couple of media reports says that roughly 50 billion US dollars will be the spend on aero engine alone by India by 2040. Uh, numbers roughly match. So such a large engine need and such a large engine spend, top it up with the MRO on the maintenance aspect in the life cycle of engine, about 35% of the cost 
uh, of an aircraft maintenance or platform maintenance gets into aero engines. So all of this gets to a mind-boggling number. And if we have to spend up a couple of billion dollars to develop an aero engine, I think it's not a big, bad value proposition. If you have to spend two, four, five billion dollars to develop and capture a market of your own, which is 50 billion dollars, it makes commercial sense. So, so having said that, I mean, I think this is uh, the need aspect of it. Uh, there are a couple of things which have happened in the recent past, like the positive indemnization list, which says that small jet engines below 120 kgf will not be imported anymore after December 24, which just passed. Then the DPEPP policy says that under aero engine complex, India has developed platforms designed and manufactured for fighters and helicopter, but there is a need to develop engine for future platforms and MRO for future platforms. So there is an ask in that policy. In DAP also, we say that jet engine above 90 kilonewton, single crystal uh, process, stealth variable, exhaust nozzle, and so other technologies which are related to engine are categorized under critical technologies section. So policy-wise, we are all probably they're aligning, saying that we need to have this. Additionally, uh, Indian Navy has uh, right now uh, done a right thing step, saying they have sanctioned design development of a diesel engine for maritime purpose. Maybe IF needs to take a leaf from there and do a similar thing uh, for the jet engine for platforms. Uh, we have successfully achieved some kind of a success in power plants for space, helicopter engines, and missiles to a very I would say limited to great extent. Uh, we have also embarked now uh, as a nation to uh, develop a turboshaft engine for a uh, next generation platform which HL is designing for IMRH and DBMRH. So some of these things are aligning towards making an ecosystem for engine development, but still the fighter jet engine development is remaining elusive. I would not get deeper into what has been done by DRDO and Kaveri and others. I'll leave it to GTRA director. And, but, you know, as a country for to develop high thrust to weight ratio engine, we need to have specific technologies, well advanced, well developed, something like high specific strength alloys, the BLISC technology, titanium nickel forging technologies, single crystal bed, thermal barrel coating. Some of them have been done at di different stages by HAL and DRDO put together, but are we there yet? Maybe, maybe not. Some of the common facilities like flying test bed, core R&D or metallurgy, component testing facilities, these in any case, and in any case, military and civil needs 80% commonality. So if we start with this or that chapter doesn't matter, but somewhere the country needs to start. A short way forward from an end user perspective, from government perspective, industry perspective, and foreign OEM perspective, I'd like to put on the table is, of course, and I've been hearing Air Force uh, for some time saying that they would definitely support the uh, country's vision on uh, Atman Nirbhartha on engine. Of course, the primary motive still remains operational capabilities, efficiencies, and in-country MRO for those engines which they operate. However, they are fully on board on supporting such a uh, scheme of thing. From a government point of view, I think this, as somebody, uh, Mateshwaran sir in the morning was mentioning that it should be a National Aerospace Commission. I partially agree with him that it needs to be taken up as a mission mode project if aero engine has to be developed. And uh, it, uh, it has to be a national project for where, where, where organizations like HAL, DRDO, Bell, BHEL, Midani, and some of the industries which have developed capabilities to manufacture and to a limited extent maintain parts of aero engines come together selflessly as a single entity or a unit in the national interest. So that kind of an approach is definitely needed. Academia has to be part of the whole plan of things. Of course, the <laughs> no industry is going to, I mean, industry needs a return on investment. So a 10 year life cycle for an engine development is going to ask for some stable uh, kind of an assurance from the government and as uh, Sukran Singh just now mentioned that being a single buyer this assurance has to come from uh, the MOD that if it is developed as and when it will be ordered uh, and there would be a return on the investment by the private sector and the DPSUs together. So uh, 
the, 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 there is another pillar which industry probably have to step into and just not remain as a manufacturer is they have to move from build to spec to, uh, from build to print to build to spec kind of a thing. Because if you keep remaining uh, manufacturers and then it is a difficult proposition to step into the next phase of development. From a foreign OEM perspective, I might say that there are only two options, either they sell or they make in India. But, you know, companies like Safran has uh, taken a step further and they have given a proposal to DRDO that co-developing such an engine. So it's not a sell, it's not a make in India, it's co-develop in India. Uh, the, the, the project we already started on turboshaft engine with HAL is a similar proposition where HAL and Safran are developing engine together. Of course, there are, I don't have to emphasize on what are the advantages of doing a core development here. So I'll like to just touch upon what is our uh, strategy or approach and uh, for the offer to India. And it's based on three pillars. One is the aeronautical or the aero engine industrial ecosystem, which we are developing. In any case, the project goes through or not goes through. So we have about 15 plus very high quality suppliers today in India which are part of our engine uh, supply chain uh, for the global demand. Uh, we have uh, current initiatives on ground, which is investment in TOT for skill and tool development related to productions. We do it with HAL, we are doing it with PTC, we are doing it with TASL, there are, and there are a couple of more. We are doing investment in kind in machinery with some of our suppliers. We are doing investment in joint ventures in India. We are doing a 100% subsidiary set up in India. So the the entire possibility of developing such an industrial ecosystem is already being uh, initiated and done for the last couple of years by Safra. Aero engine MRO is another big ask, as I said, by end user. So we are setting up the LEAP MRO facility in Hyderabad. It would be globally the largest for us. Uh, and this is going to feed into the uh, civil aviation demand uh, in coming decade. We are uh, setting up a helicopter engine MRO in Goa in collaboration with HAL as a joint venture, which will support in coming decades the military uh, engine needs of helicopters designed and developed by HAL. M88 is the next uh, scheme of things for us. Uh, we would uh, post the uh, Navy, Indian Navy contract. We would set be soon. We are already in the plan of things and we're setting up uh, the MRO. So the MRO ecosystem is getting developed parallelly. And the last but not the least pillar is aero engine design and development capabilities. So here we have uh, set up a joint venture called SAFL with uh, HAL, which will be doing the turbo shaft. We have given a not so bad proposal, if I may look at the GTRE director, uh, of doing this uh, development together for AMCA, LCA Mark II, and maybe future platforms. So right now we are awaiting the government decision on how to take it forward. Uh, we hope that in 2025 we have some way forward and we will be able to start this program in country. We have one challenge, but you know, as a company, we have accepted the challenge that generally the airframes or the aircrafts are not designed, are designed around an aero engine and not vice versa. So here the challenge with us is to fit in an engine on an airframe which is already there. But as a company, we have even accepted the challenge and given the assurance to DRDO that we can work with that challenge and get it done. We would also have some uh, asks from the DAP of indigenization content, percentage, transfer of technologies, and of course, on the material side of the engine. So we are even willing to take that step forward to help uh, achieve as much as possible uh, with Indian industry support. I mean, of course, material has to be manufactured here, produced here, then only it can be sourced for engine, but we are ready to support wholeheartedly on that. The cherry on the cake could be, if we do the project for India, is the Indo-French relationship, uh, which has been an all-weather kind of a friend. Uh, with India, we probably have no ITAR restriction. We definitely don't have any ITAR restrictions, uh, being a French uh, company. We can probably give all the export permissions for India to export tomorrow if the engine is made here. We don't, uh, and France does not talk of uh, caps, rollbacks, and uh, those kind of uh, things uh, for small geopolitical region. 
French aircrafts and helicopters have been operating in India for last 60 plus years. Uh, so we have demonstrated in the past our uh, ability to transfer technologies to ISRO, HAL and things like that. So we, we, we are a proven partner uh, in this. To conclude quickly is that, uh, you know, there are three proposals on the table with DRDO, I know that, and GTRE has done an assessment for, uh, for all three of them. But the strategy adopted by all three is a little different from each other. And without commenting on the price and the commercial aspect of it, if we look at it purely from the Atmanirbhar Ta on the aero engine technologies perspective, I find uh, that the Safran's proposal is the best in the following comparison. Political alignment with India in historical context. You look at political alignment with India in the current context. You see the track record of the company on execution technology collaborations in India. You look at the presence of manufacturing facility, any OEM is set up in India for the scale and the spread of it. You see ITAR free technologies availability. You see low to zero threat of sanctions from France. The development approach suggested by us is a win-win situation solution. The TOT offered on the design side and the manufacturing side. Engine technologies acceptance by end user, I mean they probably are happy with the engines which are coming from France in Mirage and in Rafale aircraft. Possibilities of indigenization efforts on existing uh, engines of the OEMs which are flying in India and of course full production and full support of such engines in India in future. So having uh, done and demonstrated its willingness to contribute to India's sovereignty on aero engines domain, I think Safran now proposing next step of co-developing, co-producing, co-certifying, co-testing and co-maintaining with engines for coming decades is uh, probably needs to be seriously considered by the relevant stakeholders and Indian military planners probably have to make now this hard choice between Atmanirbharta and Paradhinta on aero engine side. Only then the ambition of engine development in country can probably be powered. I rest my case here with this. Thanks. Jai Hind and Jai Bharat.